to tumors and foreign bodies and the best way to demonstrate that is with case specific examples this was an unfortunate case we encountered couple of years ago where we had a schwannoma of the orbit as you can see in this uh, ct scan it is in the mid and posterior orbit and we did a perfect transconjunctival surgery and removed the entire lesion in one piece only to realize on the next day that the patient had no light perception and extensive investigation showed uh, ophthalmic artery occlusion we had no clue when it happened because there was no post operative bleed and uh, it was a post operative surprise for all of us this unfortunately was during the period when we did not have navigation with us fast forward it to today's era where we have navigation for such cases here is a case with right proptosis if you look at the scans it shows a similar pear shaped lesion in the mid and posterior orbit extending up to the orbital apex when we performed an mri for this patient just to locate where the optic nerve is we found it to be located superomedial to the lesion so we fed the ct angio as well as the mr data into the navigation protocol which enabled us to evaluate the location of the optic nerve as well as the major vasculature of the orbital apex real time during surgery here you can see the tumor is yellow in color the optic nerve blue and the red ophthalmic artery and its branches so this enabled us to approach the lesion away from the important structures and thereby prevent the kind of complication we had in our previous case orbital foreign bodies are a challenge to search in the orbit not only because of the extensive amount of fat but also because of the important structures and the proximity to the optic nerve here is a case which had a superomedial foreign body which was metallic and because it was close to the globe the risk of siderosis warranted its removal Fortunately we performed this surgery with the help of navigation this was the entry wound just below the left brow and you can see the metallic foreign body in the superomedial extraconal space one can naturally imagine that in this area not only is there extensive vasculature but also the superior oblique tendon and the muscle so the navigation probe is in live mode here and you can see that in a small area we could easily guide our probe to know exactly where the foreign body is so that our dissection could be limited only to that small area and we immediately found the foreign body in the superomedial space adjacent to the superior oblique tendon this minimizes the amount of tissue damage to important structures and prevent post operative and prevent post operative diplopia Similarly orbitocranial tumors such as this lady in the top panel with the adenoid cystic carcinoma which was recurrent in in a scenario where part of the frontal bone was missing extensive surgery in this area without navigation can be a challenge in terms of dural rupture the lady in the lower panel where we had a large dermoid cyst which was distorting the greater wing of sphenoid obviously would need navigation technology so that you prevent damage to the important intracranial structure coming to orbital fractures uh, here is a case of a lady who had a left orbital fracture with significant enophthalmos and when you look at her imaging you can see there is a floor and medial wall fracture expanding the orbital volume So one of the ways to restore this volume is to first measure what is the volume that is lost or expanded and that is possible with the navigation technology where every coronal cut can be assessed for the expanded volume 
which builds an eventual three-dimensional image of the total area where you have this expanded volume so that you can plan your orbital plating accurately. So here you can see uh, the, the manual marking of the expanded space which eventually creates a three-dimensional structure ready for us as a guide during your surgical procedure. So that eventually allowed us to place an orbital plate and match it perfectly to the other eye. Here you can see the probe being placed on the plate so that we can match it to the other eye and get an exact correction. Similarly, what is useful with navigation is mirroring technology. Here is a patient with the right floor and medial wall fracture with the inferomedial orbital strut disrupted. On these images, you see a faint outline of red markings. These are actually mirror images coming from the other normal orbit, which tells you where the ideal location of the floor or the medial wall should have been. And when we place the orbital plate, we actually place the tracker on the plate and we confirm whether it is matching with the markings that are coming from the other orbit. That is how we ensure that both the floors are at the same level after the repair. And here I am confirming the inferomedial orbital strut and its location, whether it's matching with the other eye. In this sagittal image, you can see that the probe is on the, uh, on the titanium plate and that confirms that it is exactly like the other eye. So that gives you a good correction on table, a slight proptosis, what is uh, your ideal desire intraoperatively. It can also be later on confirmed by the fact that your orbital plate is perfectly placed and your volume is well replaced. Finally, coming to the role of navigation technology in thyroid eye disease, Medial wall and lateral wall decompressions are the two areas where we use navigation effectively. Here you can see the navigation probe being located in the ethmoid sinuses, which tells you that the medial wall has been decompressed. So how far you would go safely towards the posterior ethmoids can be easily indicated by the navigation probe. So, so is the navigation probe helpful to keep yourselves away from the cribriform plate. Similarly, deep lateral wall decompression where you are handling the greater wing of sphenoid where you are closer to the dura, navigation technology helps you keep a safe distance from the dura. So in short, for orbital tumors, we can achieve vascular safety with navigation. For orbitocranial lesions, we can reduce dural and intracranial injury. For orbital foreign bodies, localization can be well done with navigation, especially for extraconal foreign bodies. And for fractures, the 3D assessment as well as the mirroring technology is very helpful. Thank you very much and I wish all the best for the rest of the speakers for this instruction course. And thank you so much for your patient listening.